Hi, this video is a continuation from the previous one where I uh, tore down this dumpster dive TV and had to play around with it, turning it into a light panel and measuring uh, some stuff and things like that. So if you haven't seen that video, click here and check it out before watching this one. And we can get these clips off around the side here and we can get this uh, plastic bezel off to access the uh, leads and the layers in here. Now, if you haven't seen these films before, there's actually a lot of uh, technology which goes into these. You can see there's four separate layers here. On the bottom, we have a diffuser sheet. It's like really thick. Um, that's like a thick uh, polycarbonate. There's nothing too special about that uh, diffusion uh, plate. It is like got a roughed up uh, surface and stuff like that. But then we get onto these films and these are absolutely fascinating and uh, I'll link in some uh, data sheets for these. They're made by uh, 3M and uh, other companies and what they are is uh, what they're called is prism films or uh, brightness enhancement films and they're actually little prisms in there like there's millions of them and they reflect the light, diffract it, all sorts of things so it gives you an even surface and you'll notice that these are different uh, types. So I'm not sure which one's what, but they've obviously determined that they've got a main diffuser plate and then they've got three different types of brightness enhancement or prism films here doing various stuff. And, and they really are very cool technology. They're not just plastic, there's little prisms in there. Actually, this first layer here is definitely a prism film. Look, if you have a look at my finger through there, it's really interesting. The properties are gonna change, so that that really looks like it's definitely doing the prism type effect. If you have a look through, maybe you'll see multiple. It look, I have I got more than five, more than four fingers there. Maybe anyway, um, it it like it re diffracts and reflects the light and does all sorts of stuff. These, so that's definitely a prism film. And then this second sheet here, not as interesting, but it looks like some sort of uh, prism film as well. And uh, this top one is doing something different again, and that's more opaque. Um, but they've determined that they need all four layers like that through lots of <laughs> science, lots of trial and error, and, uh, you know, getting the best uniform approach and based on the number of the LEDs they need actually behind this sort of stuff. And these are used on both the um, direct LED backlight one, which is the type we'll see here, and also the, uh, the edge lit uh, ones, which I've done a video uh, tearing down an edge light uh, LCD screen before, and I'll link that one in. Now for the big reveal, where's the LEDs? Where's Wally? Well, they're not edge. Look at this, they're on the bottom. Wow, check it out. Isn't that awesome? Here's a close up of the lens and they've actually got an interesting concave uh, type arrangement in there. I'll show you another view at the moment. You might be able to see that, but yeah, they're really anchored in there. If we look under the hood, there we go. They're just uh, surface mounted onto the uh, PCBs there. So they've got various PCB strips going all the way up there. Pretty easy. They've got a real interesting concave lens on that. Look at it. Fascinating. Now, of course, at this point, you might be thinking, well, what is the best use for these things? If we've got a big PCB strip along here, well, you take these out and you can use these for uh, bench lighting or for, you know, like under bench lighting for your lab or your kitchen or uh, like vanity mirror or whatever. Um, I, I think they're much more useful than just the panel itself. I'm interested to see what sort of uh, pattern we get out from these individual uh, concave lenses in here. So I think that's a better use for these is just to rip it all apart and uh, get these cool lead strips out. Let's go. We've got these little plastic retaining clips in here. You just uh, squeeze those and push them through and then the uh, paper backing will just come off. Or you could just rip it. So if you rip all those off, bingo. We're in like Flynn and check it out. We've got, it, it is split in the middle, so two, four, five and four. So they're not exactly uh, even, but we've got one, two, three, four, five strips of five LEDs each and five strips of four LEDs each. And if we have a look at the wiring here, 
here's our two pairs coming in. One pair goes to here, goes along there, loops back, and then bingo, it, uh, well, it's got a loop there, so it basically terminates this one. So that's going two full strips, and the other one has loops up here, or back around, and ends over here. So this one has uh, three strips, and this one handles two. Now, one of the main problems about these is, uh, and to getting them out to reuse, is that they are stuck, they are stuck down. But, if we give it a jiggle, that one came up, that one's, that one's up, that one's, oh. But then again, I don't like doing the lens. Um, I don't know how the lens is stuck onto the board, but anyway, you've got to be careful. This maybe start prying it up, but mm, yeah, you've got to be careful. But if you just wanted to keep it as a uh, light panel, then of course you wouldn't have to do any of this. It's only if you want to try and get the strips out of them. You can actually get a screwdriver in there and start to lever these puppies up, but yeah, you've got to be very careful. And you'll find, if you want to get these up, because this double-sided tape's really annoying, I've got my uh, hot air gun. It's, it's only set to 100, but uh, yeah, you can get in there. It does soften the glue fairly easily, and uh, these lift up, and they actually start to come up fairly easily. But yeah, what is it? 9026C tape, whatever that is. KT 9026C, double-sided tape. Anyway... Bit of hot air will get it up, melts the glue. And you'll notice that uh, there's no copper on the back. It's not an aluminium uh, backed board or anything like that. So they're not using that as, they're not using the back panel as a uh, heat sink and they don't have thermally conductive adhesive in there. So they're just relying on the copper. You might be able to see the, uh, the uh, copper strips in there either side just to uh, dissipate the uh, heat from the lead in the copper strips. Get a good view of the lens there. How, uh, look, it almost goes right down to the die. Wow, so that's, it might have an interesting spread on that. Anyway, these are um, Inolux. Um, they've got LG on them. So now we can actually drive uh, one of these strips with a constant current uh, supply. I've got my Keithley uh, 225 constant current source here, but you can use any uh, lead strip uh, driver. Uh, short the end, of course, because they're in series, so you've got to actually uh, loop the thing back. And then I've got it set to uh, 10 milliamps. And I'll uh, turn our compliance voltage up because they're going to be three... Uh, three point something odd volts per uh, lead and bingo we're on with uh, 10 milliamps and there you go and the real fascinating thing about these is look they're basically side emitters 360 degree side emitters and this is fairly bright if I put my eye there ugh, it's blinding but I look I can put my eyeball right over the top of that and you can see the lead down in here but it's basically nothing there's hardly any let's see a little pinprick of light in there absolutely fascinating but it's all coming out the side complete side emitters you might think that they come out the top they don't that's why that concave lens that's what the concave lens does is designed to funnel the light out the side cool but of course the problem with side emitters like this is that they're effectively useless for under shelf lighting and stuff like that. I was hoping I could get these strips out, put them all in series and use them uh, to light up my bench, but they're, they're not that great if you want the light coming down on your work area. Um, if you want some sort of architectural lighting or something like that, they could be really cool. But in this case, in this particular LG TV, I'm not sure if it's the same across all modern uh, LCD TVs, but this one, eh, it's, yeah. It just goes out the side. And hopefully you can uh, see this. I've got constant exposure on the camera. You can see the light on the wall over there like that as they put it on the side and then it really goes to town, oversaturates the camera. So, yep. There, unfortunately, that's just how these things work. And if you have a look, you can see tiny little pinprick. There we go. And then wham, saturated. Cool though, huh? And it turns out we might be able to actually get these off fairly easily. Get under there. Whoop! Flippy doodah. And we're in like Flynn. And you can see that they've actually heat staked these by the looks of them. Look. But um, yeah, that came off. That came off pretty easy. And that's just a, an adhesive uh, 
strip. So there you go. Um, yep, we've got a standard uh, surface mount lead there. But it, all the magic, of course, is in the lens. And check that out. Whee! Neat, huh? I'm sure there's a lot of engineering that goes into that. So bingo, we now have our lead strip. And there we go. They're, well, yeah, the... They're actually um, fairly wide emitters, those ones. So they could be really good for underbench lighting. You can see a bit of a hot spot thing happening there up close, but uh, take them a fair way back and uh, they're actually quite nice. And there you go, I just stuck them under the uh, bench there and that that's pretty decent, apart of course from the uh, colour balance. And I have colour balanced my uh, camera and yeah it it does have that bluish uh, tinge to it so what you're seeing on screen is probably quite accurate so that's a bit of a shame but apart from that the uh, the pattern is uh, really nice and even I like it and check it out even at one milliamp um, these things light up okay and if I change it I can change that to 0.1 milliamps, so 100 microamps, and even 10 microamps, they're still on. And at 1 milliamp, they drop in uh, 5.1 volts. So, yeah, you need a fairly high compliance voltage for the entire string. And that jumps up to 5.8 volts at 100 milliamps. So the most I can do is 18 with my uh, 100 volt compliance voltage uh, Keithley 225. There ain't nothing you can't fix with enough compliance voltage. And you might have noticed these dark dots right around the outside of this white backing sheet here that reflects the light back up. Because remember, each individual LED just emits uh, from the side like that. So it's got to like bounce off the bottom and up and everything else. So um, what, the, what the function of these would be doing would be stopping the light uh, reflecting off the side because they are curved up like this. So it's in there like that. So it's curved up to, so to stop reflections back and getting uh, bright patches on the edges like this. And you'll notice that there's actually a pattern to the dots. Look, they actually get larger up here. So they've, oh, this is like, <laughs> trust me, this would be scientifically designed um, to, uh, you know, gradient. It's like a gradient going up. Dots get larger and larger and larger. And the uh, pattern feel, I don't know why they've gone out like that. Maybe it's some sort of trap or something like that, but yeah, they're definitely doing this pattern to uh, absorb the light and not have it reflect back and get really bright patches around here. It's a lot of engineering has gone into this thing. Let me tell you, I, they've spent a lot of years perfecting this. And there you have it, underbench lighting. Beauty from a dumpster dive TV. So next time you see one of these things on the uh, curbside or in a dumpster or whatever, um, definitely, Get one and rip the leads out of the thing and have a play around. You can use them for all sorts of uh, purposes, not only a light uh, box or whatever, but uh, yeah, underbench lighting, architrave or some other lighting system. Fantastic. So there's definitely some usable LEDs inside modern LCD uh, TVs, either the uh, backlit version like this or the edge lit version I've uh, done in a, another video, which I'll uh, link in. They both have usable LED strips in them uh, and you can use them for all sorts of weird and wonderful purposes. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time. There's our LED strip all the way along the bottom, all the way. So it's only one side of and we can see that on this Dave Cad drawing here, we've uh, manufactured whether they're, uh, uh, you know, chemical etch, laser etch, fingers. Well, it actually turns up much better on camera. Looks like it has lots of magic in there. Timey kangaroo down, spot. Timey kangaroo down. This film is very interesting, folks. Look at this at a really uh, shallow angle like this. It is. Uh,